Once again, staring into the insides of the Dell Power Connect 2724. I've gone ahead and just fast forwarded through the disassembly. Here are all the screws and whatnot, so I don't lose them again. Well, let's take a look at our 3D prints. Here's a side by side by side comparison of the three 3D prints. Now you'll notice the second time on blue too, the the side that I was complaining about didn't quite print correctly. I think it might have something to do with the weird temperatures that we're having here in California. I printed this in the afternoon. I printed this at night time. So I'm just going to take a guess that the difference in temperature, it was quite a warm afternoon, actually made it more chattery. And maybe, you know, Warmer temperatures will kind of fix this. And I already went ahead and sanded it out with a Dremel. Focus, focus, focus. As far as the screw pattern went, I had to go in and exacto knife these out. I'll make more prototypes in the future to actually test out what dimensions work best with these holes, since they absolutely have to pass the screws through. Once again, we have a near-perfect fit of the fan that to actually go in there. And I guess this, uh, this outer frame kind of serves as a guide in order to align the screws into the fan when you're threading them. Those screws went in there very well and now serve a very snug fit on the fan. Now let's fit this back into the switch. Thank you. 
just thread it in there very snugly, which is exactly what we want on this part. Now, if you print it on a more accurate printer, since I have a Delta printer, it really is going to be inaccurate. If you print it on a more um, accurate printer, the screws should still fit in there pretty snugly, as they should. Let's turn on the power. Huh. It's still kind of loud, but at least I can sleep through this. Alright, I'd say that works. Now next up we're going to test if we can print a better fitting version of the fan duct. It's loading, it's loading, it's loading, it's still loading. Man, this is going to take a while to load. Yep, just another day waiting for it to load. Okay, it's loaded up and yes, it is blue. <laughs> no, no, it's not loaded yet. Okay, now is it loaded? I think it's loaded now. Okay, there we go. Now we have it loaded. So, obviously we've noticed that we've had to carve out these holes quite a lot in order to get them to fit. So I'm going to go ahead and modify the hole feature. And I think the mistake that we made last time was uh, I meant to say you add point two on each edge. And a hole, being a hole, it, it basically has an infinite number of edges, but throughout every point, you'll see two edges on every side. And of course, the chamfer will have to be edited. Um, I think seven millimeters might do. Of course, we're going to print a bunch of prototype tests in order to make sure that it actually works. So let's see how that looks. Maybe 7's not wide enough. Um, even when I was doing the actual print, it had to be a bit wider than 7. So let's try 8. Okay, and that's actually touching that edge. Now, since these screws actually have to sit flush with everything, I think I want to edit it even more. Let's see what 8.4 does. Alright, that edge is clearly thinned out. Let's see exactly how much we're going in. It's not a lot. Eh. It's not too much. Of course, the closer these holes are to being flush with the actual face of this thing, you know, like directly flush with it, the better. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick with that dimension and hope that works. Let's go to printing. Okay, something clearly went wrong in that configuration.
Okay, first layer's done. Let's speed this up. Oh, no, not yet. Okay, now the first layer's done. Let's speed this up. Okay, since my desk is being monopolized right now by my laptop, I'm just going to try the screws out here, right now. That fits in nice and proper, but this... Other one's a little tight still. There's a piece of plastic where the nozzle's pulling off from it that's actually obstructing the screw, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fix that a bit. I have you in just as far as the lens will go. Hopefully you can see the little divot of plastic in there that's obstructing the screw. And that's actually from the 3D print process itself. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this through a camera lens. My camera overheated there, but I went in and cleaned up the countersinks and that screw hole. I managed to break the screen on my camera, so I have absolutely no idea what you're seeing right now. <laughs> I think it was pretty worth it to go back and fix those screw holes and actually make them. Um, you know, obviously I think this is a very worthwhile project, otherwise I wouldn't do it. Thank you for watching, and here's the exit clip.